So for six marks, we have to simplify this expression as much as possible. So for the sin 140, we know that that is the same as sin of 180 minus 40. For the sin of 360 minus x, well, as long as it's on the cast diagram, we can just say that that's going to be sin x. But because it's in this quadrant, sin is negative in that quadrant. So we're going to say negative sin x. Cos 50 is already as simplified as it can be, so we'll leave that one alone. Tan of negative x, well, to modify that, you're not going to take this minus out as a common factor, guys. Remember that that's not the way it works. If it doesn't look like one of these, then just add 360. Okay, so we're going to add 360. Now, when you add, the order does not matter. So I can change this to 360 minus x. And then let me just go one step further. So this will become sin 40 because sin is positive in this quadrant, the 180 minus quadrant. So it will just be sin 40, then negative sin x, then cos 50, and then negative tan x. This will become negative tan x because tan is negative in that quadrant. All right, now some learners panic when they see these negatives. They think, oh, we can't cancel these because this one is for sin and this one is for tan. It's actually not true at all. Uh, you could think of these as negative ones if you wanted to, and they can cancel each other now. So what we are left with is sin 40 times sin x over cos 50 times tan x. Now, let's just quickly have a look here. Don't worry about these two uh, over here. Let's just look at this tan x. We know that tan, I'm gonna write over here. We know that tan, is the same as um, sin over cos. Okay, now let's just take a look at this part over here. Uh, we can think of that part as sin x over one, and then we can say multiply by cos x over sin x. See, I'm just doing this part here. And so what happens is that these sins actually cancel and you're just left with cos x over one. So that part there is sin 40 over cos 50, and then all that this whole thing actually ended up becoming was cos x over one. Now, whenever you see sin and cos like this and the angle, if you add those angles together, what do you get? 90, cha-ching! As soon as you see that, you're onto something, life is good. So you can choose to change one of them, okay? Just one of them. So if you change this one, then this can change into cos 50. That's, it's just called co-functions, and you don't have to show the co-function. Some students always say, yeah, sir, but my teacher said we have to show it. You don't. In your final exam papers, you don't. Um, so like if you have sin 40, you don't have to say that this is the same as um, sin 90 minus 50, which is then the same as cos 50. You don't have to show that. All that I want you to remember is that if, if you have sin 20, then the opposite of that is cos 70. If you have sin of 5, then the opposite of that is cos 85. If you have cos of 15, then the opposite of that is sin 75. You see, it just switches to the other one, and then the angles add up to 90. That is all that you do. So you're going to go and change any one of these. I'll just change the top one, so that can become cos 50. And then the cos 50 we still have at the bottom. We're not going to change that one. That would be a bit silly of us to do because then we're never going to get anything to cancel out. And so if we cancel, cancel now, we end up with a final answer of cos x.